I've been doing a lot of talks about Git. Mechanics, basics, a workshop. But sometimes it's useful to step back once again from the repetitive motions, what we type into the command prompt, what we're actually executing, and look at why a tool is designed the way it's designed. That's exactly what I want to accomplish with this talk called Thinking in Git. Thinking in Git takes us through the architectural decisions, and in fact some of the data structures, mathematics, and ideas that led to the development of this unique version control system. We're not going to get too bogged down with the syntax or the option switches, but we're going to say, why does it use a directed acyclic graph? Why does it use hashes for the objects, the trees, the tags, the commits? What kind of architectural benefits do we receive from this rather complex derivative of the blobs? Hashing them. Why? It seems like running them through one more function. Just save the file plain on disk. But we'll reveal little instances, an easy example right here, is that we can detect single bit errors anywhere in the history of the version control system's files that it's saving out. Any single bit that's rotted due to corruption, due to a mistake in the file system, due to literally a hardware failure of the disk itself, can be detected and identified anywhere from the beginning of time up to the current point in the version control's history. Making those kind of architectural decisions yields another use case, and that is ones that we don't know. What does that mean? Well, when you design a tool to have multiple levels of entry, places that you can use it at low, medium, or high level, the things that we type at the command line, you actually enable a whole derivative set of tools that can be built on top of this. Some will hook it at the low level and change the storage persistence to, say, be a distributed key value pair system, some sort of NoSQL store. Or you could hook it in at the medium level and actually build a GUI atop the Git system, not having to use those rather cryptic or sometimes cryptic commands at the command prompt, but still keeping the two lower layers exactly intact. Or, in fact, at the high level, you could go way to the top and build a tool that doesn't even showcase Git itself. One example there is a document or book author's system that's been built on top of this that versions the documents as you write them transparently, invisibly, without intervention, but letting the author slide back in time to see how his work has changed over the last couple of weeks or months. No Git knowledge required. So I think there's some very interesting software architecture lessons and some engineering lessons that can be learned from Git specifically without getting bogged down in the details of the syntax. We can see if we can apply these to some of the software projects that we build and architect.